only one at home. Hello and uh, welcome to RCTV. I am Anthony, joined by Idan. We are at Coach McNelly Stadium for a Frontier Liberty Division matchup between Springford and Upper Marion. Idan, what do you have on Upper Marion? Yeah, well, Upper Marion, uh, they're they're. Their key part to winning this game is making sure they contain Springford to scoring as minimal points as they can. Springford is one of the hottest teams out there right now. And Upper Marion, they've been struggling a little bit recently. But, um, you know, uh, the, they need to make sure their captains are, uh, are really taking, uh, taking, the, taking the lead this game. Their captains are Olivia Barr, Sophia Lamesta, and Morgan Donovan. So, uh, yeah, good luck to those girls. And for Springford, they are eight and one overall. Their only loss is an out of conference loss to CB West. They are four zero in the pack. They're coming off a big four three overtime win at o over O and J. And um, some players to watch are the UMass commit Ella Curry and midfielder Hope Flanagan. The two teams will now take the field for the kickoff. You know, Anthony, as uh, uh, the Rams get ready, uh, you know that they're they're clearly have the upper hand this game. You know, co uh, you know coming into this game, especially looking at their record. But Upper Marion, they 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 are probably desperate to make their uh, record better. So Springford better have their heads up and make sure they don't get upset today. Yeah, Upper Marion's on a bit of a tough streak. They're on a um, I believe a four-game losing streak. You know, always want to snap them. You know, Springford's always a tough opponent. A lot of teams like to come in, give their best effort. Um. Definitely see one from the Vikings here today. Springford is coming off one of their toughest wins yet as they just won an overtime against one of their rivals. Uh, and, you know, that, that was such a difficult game. And to, uh, and before that game, they, they got their first loss. So if, if anything, Springford is kind of having probably their toughest stretch of the season right now. So let's hope that uh, the girls are ready to go today. Definitely hoping for a strong start. And the kickoff, and the ball will go to spring forward. To midfield, to Molly Thomas. She will dump it off to Ella Curry. Great ball movement. Ball's taken away there. Good stop. Back to Molly Thomas, and her shot is no good. Good start defensively for Upper Marion. Uh, you know, al although Springford got down there, I think uh, I think they did a good job protecting the goal. Yeah, they did a great job. You know, they were able to D up, defend a couple shots, and strong start for them. Katie Seitz's header will go out of bounds. And Upper Marion will take possession of the ball. Ball will go back out of bounds. Another throw in. Bit of bumping. Ball goes to midfield. Scramble for the ball. One by Springford. They will clear it to the goalie, Riley Wallace. And she will pass it. Great defense by Springford in that uh, toss in. Yeah. They did not allow Upper Mary to get that ball whatsoever. A little bit of bumping and grinding going on there, but that's sports. <laughs> Good clear. Riley Wallace will retain possession of the ball. She will roll it. Now Ella Curry has the ball midfield. To Molly Thomas. Raven Wellington shot, no good. Again, another good defensive stand next to the goal. Upper Marion needs to stay consistent with that. Ball goes out of bounds, and Upper Marion will retain possession here on the throw in. Up 
Murray. Good defense by Caitlin Norwood there to stop the stop their drive. Yeah, good job uh, containing that fast break. That could have been bad pass, for Springford. Pass to Wellington. Back to Curry. Upper Marion takes control of the ball. Ball will go out of bounds, and it will be Springford's ball. Driving in the middle. Ball will head out of bounds. Will be Upper Marion's ball. And Upper Marion, again, the common story, defeating Springford's attacks early on in this game. What are you seeing from him, Don? Uh, you know, I I think that Springford is honestly being very resilient right now. Uh, you know, keep on driving to the goal and not letting them even get close to their goal. Um, and I definitely do think that Springford right now is in control of the game, even though Upper Marion isn't letting anything go inside the goal. Whoa, she ducked from that ball. <laughs> she saw that coming right at her, and yeah. she had to duck. Katie Seitz does have a powerful leg. If she kicked the ball at me, I'd probably get out of the way myself, you know. <laughs> Upper Marion will make a substitution here. That looks like number 25. Emma Wellington checking into the game for Upper Marion. Ball will go to midfield. Wellington is there from Springford. And there's a cross from Upper Marion. Header followed by a header. Marion athlete hits the deck. A good chest by Ella Curry. Always tough to not, you know, you want to use your hands in that situation. Always tough to resist the urge, and she did a good job there. Upper Marion is clearly struggling uh, getting getting their offense going, which could be a problem for them later on. Ball goes out to Katie Seitz, and it is cleared by Upper Marion. Springford will give the ball back to Riley Wallace. So far, her only action in the game. And Springford moving the ball around, looking for an angle to attack. Wallace will kick it back over to Norwood. Sends it middle. To Malay. Back to Curry. Her cross is deflected. Let's see if they can uh, start something on offense here. Marion. Again, great defense. Good defense by Springford on the double team, pinning her in the corner. Oh, what a pass. And Wellington's got a breakaway for Springford. Uh, looks like we have a offside penalty. For Marion, we'll get the ball. Good call by the ref, though, uh, recognizing the offsides and making sure that uh, there was no goal that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, those 1v1s with the goalie are always tough. Ball goes back to Wellington. Defend it tightly. Molly Thomas sends it middle. Oh, she missed the pass. Kick is up oh, and in. What a goal. Looked like Erica Smith scoring there for Springford. Fantastic goal. You know, a beautiful pass by Molly Thomas. I wasn't even expecting the, the ball to go to Erica there. Um, that's what, that's what, as a midfielder, you have to do best is uh, find, find players for the open goal. That goal did look a little sloppy, you know, with Upper Marion get their, get, getting their uh, foot on it a couple times. But at the end of the day, it's whether that ball crosses the line or not. Yeah, Springford keeping up the constant attack. Eventually, the wall will fall for Upper Marion. They've been doing a good job so far. Let's see if they can bounce back here. That was a, that was a pretty bad pass by Upper Marion trying to get it out to number seven. And Springford just gets the ball right back. Ball will get cleared to Raleigh Wallace. Her cross is deflected. 
Ball will go out of bounds, spring forward for the throw in. They will pass it back to Moulet. Down across. That was a dangerous pass. It almost got intercepted. Almost. Little football terminology for you. Yeah. This is technically the football of the world, Edan. <laughs> we Americans, we're different with our football. Molly Thomas in the middle. Oh, well, good, almost good stolen. Move. Good move to keep it alive. To Wellington on the outside, and uh, the ball will go out of bounds. That pass was a little, uh, little high for Wellington over there in the corner, but... It's okay, as Springford already has their 1-0 lead. For Springford here, you want to look to build on that lead. Um, here with um, just over eight minutes elapsed in the first half. Of course, 40-minute running clocks. Um, only real stoppages are for red cards and injuries. Ball goes out of bounds. You know, fun fact, uh, they do stop the clock in the last five minutes of the second half. Um, if the winning team starts substituting. Oh, wow. That's I mean, if the losing team starts substituting. That's an interesting rule. That's a probably a good way to keep the clock alive, save some time, you know, maybe buy a goal. If it's a tight game, you'll definitely see Upper Marion take, take um, advantage, full advantage of that rule. Lay with the ball, looking for an attack. Passes it to Molly Thomas. Outside to Wellington. Back to Molly Thomas. The ball movement is superb. Yeah, Springford's keeping that ball moving. No one's holding onto it for too long. They're keeping it quick moving, keeping the upper Marion defenders running back and forth, tiring them out. Ooh, good pass. Pass middle, shot. Ooh, saved save. by the goalie. Good save. That was a fantastic pass, though. Another save. Another save, beautiful. Now, of course, the goalie able to pick the ball up with her hands there. And she will drop kick it. Sorry, excuse me, punt it midfield. Intercepted by Springford. Moulet with the ball. Springford will clear it all the way back out to Riley Wallace. Both teams will be looking to make substitutions the next dead ball. It's Wellington on the outside looking for an attack. She makes her move. Passes back to Thomas. Her pass is intercepted. Ball is cleared. Shot on the goal. Blocked. Good pickup. And her punt will go to midfield. Picked up by Allison Eck, and she will look to attack on Springford. Ball is cleared out. Walls takes control. Upper Marion has to get some offense going. Yeah, Springford's been locking them down pretty good on defense. But this is uh, part of the reason why they're 1-4 and four and struggling so far this season. Maybe they're just off to a slow start. They'll get it. Into the middle. The captain, Olivia Iyer, will chase the ball out of bounds. And some substitutions will be made. Uh, one key substitution is number 22, Isabella Branco. She is the only uh, defensive captain for Springford. 
and uh, they'll be looking to make their defense even stronger than it already has been this game. So okay. let's see how that turns out for them. Obviously, having your captain on defense is very good. You know, when you look for captains, you look for people to lead the team, and obviously, Isabella Bronco has done a good job of it this season. Also, uh, Emily Higgins is subbed in. Uh, she's going to be the 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 mid player for Springford. See if she can get any offensive goals or uh, assist. Good defense by uh, number six, 26. Ball goes to Moulet. Passes it middle to Mackenzie O'Connor. Ball is stolen by Chloe Rivera Montes. And Springford will regain possession. Yeah, good job by Chloe from stopping the movement there. Yeah. Able to cross it. Tried to get a little bit of an attack. Nothing there. Ball will go to the middle. Back to Mackenzie O'Connor. Dribbles around, looks for a pass, drops it back. Ball will go midfield. That was a solid pass, splitting the dis defenders. Felicia Vagnosi will try to run the ball down. She's able to keep the ball in bounds, keep the possession alive. Ball goes to Molly Thomas, and she will dribble. Boy, Molly Thomas has some ankle-breaking stuff. I will tell you that, Edon. Yeah, tell me about it. My ankles are breaking. I'm just up in the booth watching. <laughs> Oh, good, good defense uh, from sailing the ball from behind there. In the middle, Emily Higgins will send it back. It's been a constant attack from Springford today. They've been able to keep the ball moving quickly. You know, a lot of forward progress. You know, keeping up for Marion on their heels. On the outside to Emily Higgins. She will pass it middle to Molly Thomas. Ball is booted back out. Thomas regains possession. Over to Vagnosi. She will put on a move. A oh, little bit of a dribble. Stolen. Ball is stolen and cleared. Looks like number 13, Morgan Donovan for Upper Marion with the good defense there. Shot is wide and off the net. Will be Upper Marion's ball. Upper Marion making a sub. That's number six. Captain Olivia Barr checking into the game. Olivia Barr is a senior this year, playing her last year for Upper Marion. The long four years, man. Time yeah. flies. Lee Higgins on the outside. Passes it over to Molly Thomas. All those four years of soccer has clearly paid off as she's this year's captain. She's looking to lead this team to victory here tonight. <laughs> Emily Higgins, long shot Whoa! up and good. What a shot from Emily Higgins, able to curve it in. Unbelievable. That had to be from what, the 15-yard line, if yeah. we're talking football terms? We're talking, yeah, 25 yards out. Beautiful shot. She's able to hook it, keep it high, just out of the goalie's reach. Fantastic goal. And with about 24 minutes and 21 seconds left, Springford takes a 2-0 lead on Upper Marion. Yeah, I thought I, after I saw Emily Higgins um, getting in the substitution, I was I was sure they were gonna do a strong offensive attack attack with her. She was looking for that shot. She's been looking for that since the moment she came in. Finally got the angle, took the shot. Ball will go out of bounds. Spring forward ball. And the throwing. There's a little physical right there. A little bit of interlocking ankles. Shot on the goal. That was Upper Marion's first real shot at a goal, and that says something about their offense so far. I think it says more about Springford's defense, you know? That's a good point. That's a good point. Springford's defense has really been playing them tough so far. I mean, like I said, for Upper Marion, maybe they're going for the quality over quantity tactic here in today's game. Ball hits sky high, midfield.
Pass is stolen. Lisa Vagnozzi will hit the cross midfield. Driving. Ball is deflected, and looks like Upper Marion will regain possession of it. And Springford regains possession. Oh, good ball movement. And a good clear there. Nice stop for Upper Marion. That's Hope Flanagan with the ball. Passes it to Felicia Vagnozzi. Ball will go out of bounds. If that pass was more on point, Vagnuzzi probably would have had a clear shot for a goal. Yeah. And it looks like senior captain Ella Curry checking into the game now. Now, Edan, how about Ella Curry, the UMass commit? Boy, is she special. Yeah, I mean, uh, she she. there's a reason why she's a captain this year, and um, and there's also a reason why she's going to UMass this year. She can play soccer. She lights it up. Look to see her. Hope Flanagan with the ball. Passes it over to Curry. Curry will do some dribbling. Shot. Saved by the goalie. Also, uh, subbing in for Upper Marion right now is Julia Newby. And she is, in fact, a newbie as she is a ninth grader. Wow. Freshman on varsity. That's quite the honor. That is, that is quite the honor. I can't wait to see her in four years. Well, I won't be here, but... Yeah, as I'm a junior. Maybe she can do. Maybe she can light it up in this game. We'll see. Cross is nearly intercepted by Emily Higgins. Yeah, I saw. I thought I saw a handball there. I'm not sure though. Yeah. Looks like they. As the ref did call it. They called a handball on Emily Higgins. Didn't look like she tried to get it with her hand. Looks like it just grazed her arm. But in soccer, that is a handball. It is what it is. Long kick. To the goalie. She'll roll it over. See, I feel like for Upper Marion, that was, uh, that was a wasted possession. Yeah, maybe a little strong on the kick there. Um, oh. Upper Marion driving. Shot wow. is saved. Great save. Riley Wall has proven to be a brick wall back there so far. It was her first real challenge, and she just looked calm and collected making that save. Upper Marion... Uh, Number four should have put that more in the air, and maybe maybe that would have been a goal. But she decided to play it safe, and it cost them. Good pass by Vagnozzi. Ball goes to Ella Curry in midfield. She's very dangerous there. This is blocked by number six, Olivia Barr. Captain making her mark on this game. Vagnozzi. Oh, the pass is off. Pass is long. Looks like Vagnozzi's going to run it down. Shot on the goal. Blocked. But for Marion's goalie, I mean, apart from the two goals she's given up, she's been withstanding a lot of tests from Springford today. You may look at it and say she's given up two goals, but she's blocked countless shots today. That's a good point, Bramford. <laughs> Especially when you have this 8-1 and one Springford team, I would say that that goalie is giving it everything it got. she's got today. I mean, if you take it away, she wasn't in the goal. It would probably be like 6 nothing Springford right now. No, no. If she wasn't in the goal, I would say it's going to be 10 nothing. the amount of shots they've taken. Yeah. There's been a lot of shots on goal for Springford in this game. And I would say that there has been maybe two shots for Upper Marion that's, that was even slightly in the vicinity of the goal. Upper Marion definitely off to a slow start in this game. And Higgins gets bumped, retains possession of the ball, clears it. Back to Ella Curry in the mid. It's Grace Sharkey passing it mid. Ball is cleared out. Ella Curry regains possession of it, clears it out back to Sharkey. Pass goes middle. Out wide to Emily Higgins. Of course, she's very dangerous from that spot. Springford just entered the red zone. Shot saved. Good save by the goalie, but if Vagnozzi had a better position there, that probably would have been another goal.
About to sub in for Upper Marion is Riley Ayton. She is a starter for Upper Marion. Uh, looking to get an offensive push before halftime, which is about 18 minutes away from this point. Ball goes middle to Hope Flanagan. She turns it over. Out wide to Isabella Bronco. Looks like Upper Marion will gain control of the ball. Subs will check in. Number one, Sarah Latanzi, and number 14, Riley Eaton. I mean, if only Sarah Adams for Upper Marion. I mean, we said it, we said it earlier, but she's continuing to just you know, stop most of the shots that come her way. And that's yeah. what you look for for a goalie. Look, uh, Upper Marion, they have to get, I mean, this could not be a more one-sided half. And I mean by one-sided, I mean it's literally been on one side of the field. Yeah. Oh, wow. Good save there by number 17, Isabella Gendry. That was a bad bad decision by the goalie to just fall there. That could have been very bad for Upper Marion. But, but, a, good, but a good job by Lissendry to back up her goalie. You know, seeing she committed a little too far out and... You know, with just, just over 16 minutes to go, we look to see if Upper Marion can get something going on offense. Curry shot. Saved by Adams. Ball will go out of bounds, and Adams will pass it off. Long kick by Legendry into the middle. To Flanagan in the middle. She looks. Shot goes through the uprights, but here in soccer, that is not any points for Springford. If this was football, they would have had three, but this is soccer, so no <laughs> points there. Just a, a powerful shot from Flanagan. That makes you wonder, should girls play kicker for in football? I mean, definitely they can make it work. I think so, too. Looks like Legendry will get set for another kick. Her kick into the middle. Springford regains control. Grace Sharkey with a good D. And Bronco will gain, regain the ball for Springford into the middle. Good defense by Newby. Flanagan lets the ball go. And Upper Marion will control the ball. Incoming for Upper Marion is number 13, and the captain, Morgan Donovan, senior. She's huh. another senior on this Upper Marion team who's looking to lead him. They have a lot of uh, senior, uh, senior and junior starters, as, uh, as most teams would. Definitely an experienced team here. Of course, the Springford team mainly consisting of juniors. They will look to be strong next year as well. Even stronger than this year. Vagnozzi struggling over in the corner. She will pass it to Mackenzie O'Connor in the middle. Back to Vagnozzi. Looking. And another stop by Adams. A significant junior that, uh, you know, that, that, that could really accelerate next year as a player is, uh, is Hope Flanagan. Yeah. She's been a very, very active soccer player her entire middle school and high school career. I mean, Hope, one of the really big, another big name, you know, looking to make her mark like Ella Curry in the mid. She passes it. Picked off. Emily Higgins will gain control of it. Kind of around the spot where she made that girl goal earlier. She will pass it off this time. 
Ball goes back to mid. Save. Alec Curry looking for a shot. Nothing there. Ball gets cleared. Let's see if... Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say if... Uh, looked like a fast break was developing for Upper Marion. Mackenzie O'Connor was able to sweep in there and steal the ball. Sharkey to O'Connor. Back to Sharkey. In the middle to Erica Smith. Her pass is deflected. You know, I realized that uh, Vagnosi has been constantly able to get open in that corner over there, but ever since uh, they, after, ever since Upper Marion subbed in Morgan Donovan, uh, Vagnosi has been covered the entire time. So yeah, maybe, maybe that's a matchup to look for for the rest of this game. Yeah, she's been running. Vagnosi's been doing a good job running up and down the sideline, um, looking for the shots, but you know, Donovan's defense has been there to answer. Subbing in for Springford, it's Molly Thomas and I believe Allie Napier. Of course, we look to see more of Molly Thomas's flashy dribbles in the middle. Uh, no, correction, number 13 was Katie Seitz. Oh, thank you, Don. Higgins will throw it into Mackenzie O'Connor. Back to Higgins. Ball is stolen. Good collision there. How do you see the rest of the season shaping out for Springford? As they have uh, about eight more games to think, uh, I think have they have eight more games left, I think. Well, you know, for Springford, they're going to have some tough matchups ahead of them. Obviously, they're going to replay all the teams in their division. Um, you know, they've had, they're on a bit of a hot streak right now. I mean, they had a huge win over in overtime against Owen Jay. I mean. And a couple, uh, couple weeks ago on the, on the 4th of September, they, they demolished their opponent as they won 12-0. You rarely see that. Running against Norristown, I mean. Springford has proved they can play in the clutch. They were down a uh, two zip at halftime against Pottsgrove. They were able to come back and win that game four to two, and against O and J, big comeback win, able to outlive them in overtime. And they had a big one zero win against Boyertown. So they're definitely a team that's hot right now, even with a loss to CB West. But you know they look to stay hot. And you know, obviously, uh, the spring uh, as a fast break is developing here for Upper Marion, and it's still. But uh, as I was saying, um, I think that a, a lot of the credit goes to the girls for, for their recent success. But I think also the coach, uh, Mo Hadidi, um, for the Springford girls has been ex excellent in calling the games and uh, getting the girls prepped for their matchups. I mean, he's obviously done a great job with his game plan. All the girls know what they're doing. They look calm. They don't look panicked out there. And I mean, even with the record, you could say the same for Upper Marion. They look just as composed out there, even though they are struggling a little bit right here because they got a little something developing. Some substitutions made. That's number 25. Emma Wellington checking into the game for Upper Marion. In a weird way, do you think Springford is a little disappointed they're not playing better? No, because I, I think uh, Upper Marion, you know, they've been struggling, and, you know, Springford tends to blow out teams that struggle. You know, I wouldn't say struggles the right word. A lot of Upper Marion's games have been close games that they've just been unable to win. I think, I think Springford's definitely happy with what they got. You know, just under nine minutes to go, they're up two nothing. You know, they've they're in command of the ball right now. So, I think for Springford, they just want to limit Upper Marion's shots on goal. And they've, they've done a good job. They've only had two. They've only had two this whole game. So they've yeah. done a fantastic job on defense. Ball goes to Molly Thomas. She'll pass it over to Emily Higgins. It's Allie Napier with the ball.
Katie Sites now looking for something. She'll pass it over. And I'm going to restate my point. I said before, Vagnozzi has been completely shut out ever since um, they brought in Donovan to cover her. Great, great job by Donovan. And obviously, Springford runs a lot through Vagnozzi. You know, she's a very potent scorer down there on the edge. And Donovan's done a great job limiting their looks in that corner. And to be honest, ever since I think they brought her in, the Springford has not even got a shot off. So I think that she might be the X factor for their defense. But it doesn't mean that their offense is going to get improved. So I'm just concerned for how Upper Marion is going to get their offense going because we haven't seen a single sign yet, except for that maybe one fluky outbreak. I mean, you definitely seen some signs of life from Upper Marion, you know. Got halftime in about seven minutes. They'll look to make some adjustments there. Another save by Sarah Adams. She will punt it in the midfield. I wish I could punt that far. Don't we all? <laughs> and Grace Sharkey will run it down, clear it out to Riley Wallace. Uh, that pass was a little bit over, over kicked. That could have been something big for Upper Marion. Back over to Sharkey. Ooh, good job by Donovan. Able to take it away from Katie Sites. Shot on goal. Saved. Another solid look for Upper Marion, but not able to convert. I think they I think they need to spend more time down there and get some more passes going to uh, get some more open shots. That was a little bit of an ill-advised shot. Still a good look nonetheless. But definitely, uh, Springford's been able to keep the ball moving a lot more quickly, a lot more consistently than Upper Marion. And that's probably why they're winning right now. Upper Marion will look to do the same. This is the most Upper Marion has been on their side the, <laughs> the whole game. Over to Bronco. O'Connor will give it to Higgins. Back to O'Connor. Into the middle to Erica Smith. She will kick it outside. Bronco will kick it long. And Upper Marion will gain control of it. Adams will punt it. Bronco will come up, passes it out to Higgins. Into the middle, back to Smith. Vagnozzi back to Sharkey. And... Ball stays in bounds. Good save there. Sharkey will go middle to Molly Thomas. Out to O'Connor. O'Connor's shot. Over the crossbar. No good. And that was Springford's first shot on goal in a while, he done. What does that say about Upper Marion's defense? I think it's improved over time. Um, over oh, No, not over time. As the game went on. Um, and I definitely think that a huge part of their defensive, uh, their defensive um, kind of, kind of uh, electric has come from, as I said before, has come from uh, Donovan. Agnosi looking for a shot on goal. Hesitation. Now she drives. Defend it. Ball will get cleared out. Emily Higgins with the volley. And O'Connor's kick will go out of bounds. I'm very curious to see how this turns out because uh, Donovan is no longer on Vagnozzi, so we'll see if that was really uh, what was containing Vagnozzi. That's a matchup to watch the rest of the game. Definitely. Marion with a bit of a drive here. Ball's taken away by O'Connor. 
Back so- out to Higgins. Soccer is such a difficult sport. I mean, you're constantly running, and I mean, these girls, I, I'm sure they go through a lot, you know, just to keep their stamina up. And you got to use your feet, too. No hands here in soccer. Yeah, Anthony, you might know a little bit about running. You, uh, you do some track and field, don't you? Yeah, a little or bit con- of... Cross country, right? A little bit of cross country, a little bit of track in there. Um, obviously, two different types of training. They're training more for on and off stamina, and I'm training for uh, full long distance running, but... Man, I could never understand the enjoyment of running. That's just me, though. Whoa, what a pass. What a pass. Sights and oh. nothing there. Sights looked like she bobbled the ball a little bit, and Adam's able to pick it up. That was a fantastic pass. Definitely a pass for the highlight reel. By the way, a quick shout-out to our camera crew. They're doing a fantastic job on the field today. And also our... Or uh, crew inside the 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 van, doing a fantastic job. Metal Higgins looking to run down the ball. She will let it go out of bounds. About two minutes left to go here in the first half. Springford leading two nothing on Upper Marion. And here comes here comes back in uh, here comes back in Donovan to see if she can at least protect the goal from. Any more damage before halftime for Upper Marion. Also checking into the game for Upper Marion was number seven, Olivia Iyer. Nice header there, and that followed by another header. Ah, uh, should have kept the streak. Upper Marion will gain possession of it. Stolen by Emily Higgins. She now drives down the field. Into the middle. Stolen. Uh, she, tried, she tried the same pass as before. Now for Marion with a bit of a drive here. Good D by Mackenzie O'Connor. Yeah, as we're getting down to one minute, I think Upper Marion has to uh, figure out some offensive strategy You know, during halftime. Um, I think their defense has improved from the first half of this first quarter. Erica Smith's cross will go to Felicia Vagnozzi into the middle. Wonderful pass. What a hustle. Wellington will run the ball down, and it is kicked out of bounds. What a hustle. That was... That is some fast running. That was some great hustle there by Raven Wellington. 30 seconds left in the first half. Springford will throw it in. Out to Allie Napier. She will cross it to Bronco. We are closing in on 15 seconds. Springford looking to get one more look at the goal. Ball will go out of bounds. About 10 seconds left. And it looks like we'll go to half. Upper Marion just going to, looks like they're just going to hold it out. Take it to half. Work on their game plan. As you hear the horn, the first half is done. Springford is up by two. Upper Marion has had some struggles on offense, but might have fixed their defense. What do you think, Anthony? Yeah, Upper Marion definitely looking for um, a little bit of an improved game plan on offense for Springford. You could say the same. They haven't had as many shots on goals we got later into the half. Um, and for Upper Marion, it's just keep grinding on defense. We will see you after halftime. Home fire drills give your family a plan of action. In a home fire, you may have less than two minutes to get out. So when you drill, show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice home fire drills at least twice a year. You can even make them fun. So everyone knows the sound and exactly what to do when they hear a smoke alarm. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family for home fires. Welcome back to Coach McNally Stadium as we get ready for the second half of Upper Marion versus Spring Ford. Um, Don, what have you seen in the first half? Well, we saw uh, a goal very early from Spring Ford uh, that gave him a 1-0 lead. And, uh, you know, Spring Ford just kept on attacking, kept on attacking. And uh, Spring Ford got another goal, which was a pretty crazy goal uh, from the corner. And I would say it was uh, from the 10 yard line on the football field. So, yeah, Spring Ford uh, had that great offensive attack early. But uh, Upper Marion fixed their defense, and they 
They contain Springford the rest of the quarter, but Upper Marion needs to make sure they have an offensive push because if they won't, if they don't, they're, they will lose. They're already down by two. So uh, we'll see what Upper Marion can do to fix their offense, and we'll see what Springford can do to maintain the Upper Marion push. We've got 40 minutes more of soccer here in the second half, and we will look to start. I do expect Upper Marion to be electric in the second half because, to be quite honest, they have to be. They have to be. They're 1-4 they're you know, to start the season, and they need to break their streak. They have to. So we'll see what they can do defensively, and especially we'll see what they can do offensively. I'm sure their coach talked to them about, you know, pushing the ball and getting some more passes down near the goal. Definitely for Upper Marion looking for a um, bit of a start here to offense. They went dry in the first half with no goals. We look to see that their offensive adjustments are coming out. Out of the first half, Upper Marion had maybe two good shots, and that is just unacceptable, uh, especially when you're playing such a offensive-powered team in Spring Ford. Teams will break huddle. They will switch sides for the second half. Who was your uh, key standout in the first half? I, mean, I think in the first half, Ella Curry had a great first half. I mean, the three midfielders for Spring Ford, Molly Thomas, Ella Curry, Hope Flanagan, all played great. Um, the defense was really good from Spring Ford, too. And for Upper Marion, the goalie, Adam, she had a really good, really good first half. I mean, she gave up two goals, but she stopped countless goals. You know, able to keep the game close, give Upper Marion a chance here in the second half. We get ready for the kickoff. Um, I think one of, one of my standouts for this game is definitely Emily Higgins. I mean, that, that, that goal, you know, closer to the middle of the second half was unreal. Yeah, it was a beautiful shot. And Upper Marion with a quick steal there to begin the half. That's what they got to do. Bronco gain control. Pass to the middle. Now back on the outside. Pass over to Emily Higgins. Goes out of bounds. Julia Newby's pass. Goes to Sophia Lamesta. Ball on the outside now. That's number seven. Olivia Iyer. This is some of the passing they needed in the first half. Upper Marion definitely coming out, keeping the ball moving a lot quick, a lot more quicker here. Pass is deflected by Erica Smith and will go out of bounds. Upper Marion will keep control of the ball. The throw in, headed out. Ball is stolen. Pass to Felicia Vagnozzi. She will attempt to cross it to Emily Higgins. Ball gets across. Higgins will pass it out. And Upper Marion will gain control of it. Whoa. Bit of a fall there. She'll brush it off and get back up. Upper Marion for the throw in. Ayers throwing. Picked off by Erica Smith. I think one thing that uh, Springford has had in the first half that Upper Mary needs to work on is, you know, Springford has had the hustle. You know, they've been way more active. And uh, Upper Mary showed a little bit of that, you know, a couple minutes ago. But we'll see if they can uh, do some more of that this half. And I guarantee you they'll get some goals. Ball goes out to Emily Higgins. She looks to attack. She'll pass it midfield to Felicia Vagnozzi.
Ball's cleared out. Ball goes in the back into the middle. Erica Smith will take it. Great quick pass by Higgins to get it over the middle. Vagnosi. Back into the middle. Ball's cleared out. Lahendre with a good D. And she will clear it out to her teammate. Marion definitely off to a strong start here defensively. Springford is yet to get a shot on goal. And you could say the same for Upper Marion. Bronco passes it to Higgins, back to Bronco. Whitney Steiner with the, st with the good D. Bronco is rocking that awesome pink hair. Definitely, definitely makes her stand out out there on the field. Definitely looks fantastic. <laughs> and Springford will gain control of the ball. Rowan will go into mid. Ball's back on the outside. The cross over to Bronco. Passes it. Emily Higgins running it down. Looking for a shot on goal. She hit one from there earlier. Man, Higgins is fast. Marion driving. It's number seven, Olivia Iyer. She hits the deck, gets back up. And checking into the game for Upper Marion, number one, Sarah Latanzi, and number 13, Morgan, Morgan Donovan. Donovan. Morgan Donovan, of course, been a big leader for Upper Marion's defense in the first half. You know, they were able to limit Springford to two goals. Which, honestly, I know two goals is a lot, but honestly, with the Springford team, that says a lot. They've been able to maintain Springford's pretty much explosive offense. Springford will gain control of the ball. Felicia Vagnosi for the throw-in. Never mind. Over to Erica Smith. Pass it. Ball is cleared out. The cross is picked off. Oh, good hustle, but. Allison Eck hit the deck there. Good defense there by Upper Marion, able to prevent the Springford drive. Ball's up in the air. Ooh. O'Connor takes one off the head. Ball goes in Higgins' direction, and it is cleared by Upper Marion. Didn't look like O'Connor was expecting that one to go for her head. Had a little bit of um, an accidental header there. Yeah. Those can be painful, you know? They can. You see a lot of soccer players get concussions because of that. All right, here we have our first corner kick of the game. So Emily Higgins will send it in to the goal. They go short instead of long over to Bronco. She will go mid. O'Connor volleys. That seemed a little passive for Springford. I, uh, I, I was kind of hoping to see a, uh, a solid corner kick that maybe could result in a, in a goal. Yeah, Springford electing to go for the short corner there instead of the long corner. Obviously the fan favorite, the long corner. Sometimes the short corner is the better play. Well, the whole point of the short corner is to really, you know, get it out and then have, you know, the person you pass it to get an opportunity to make the goal. But Spring forward in the middle of the ball. Shot saved by Adams. Adams will punt it midfield. Man, I don't even have enough fingers to count how many saves she's had. 
Yeah, definitely need um some definitely need Microsoft Excel for that one. <laughs> Springford will clear it out with the header to the goalie. Just a quick side note. What a beautiful day here at uh, at, at the stadium. I mean, we, not even a single cloud in the sky. Yeah, we definitely the the very nice fall weather we traditionally get up here in Pennsylvania. Definitely in swing here. Nice breeze. The ball is kicked into the corner. Two Springford athletes and two Upper Marion athletes will go running after it. And the ball will go out of bounds. Upper Marion ball. Some subs coming into the game for Upper Marion. Number 18, Catherine Merritt, and number 25, Emma Wellington, into the game now for Upper Marion. Both of them are junior students at Upper Marion High School, and they are looking to get a starting position next year. Springford will send its entire bench to the table. They will check in at the next dead ball. I like that move by Springford. You know, keep, keep the rotation simple and big. And, you know, I think that's the thing about Spring Ford's strengths. You know, they have such a good bench. Yeah, they are a very deep team for sure. Spring Ford will clear it out. Over to Bronco. She will misplay it, and the ball will go out of bounds. Throwing goes to number 25, Wellington. Erica Smith gains control, passes it over to Mackenzie O'Connor in the middle. She will pass it up to we to Wellington from Springford. Back out to Higgins. Higgins makes a bit of a move, looking for a shot, nothing there. Smart move by Higgins to take it over the middle. That's where most shots are successful. She will pass it out to Sharkey. Ball will go back over to the corner. Erica Smith trying to run it down, unable to do so. Good hustle from Erica Smith. And here comes the new Springford team. Springford with a complete swap. Upper Marion also sending in some subs. Yeah, but, I mean, look who's coming in. Now you have Hope Flanagan coming in. I mean, probably one of their best players offensively. You have... It's just such a, such a balanced team, you know? Springford sending in most of their midfielders. Hope Flanagan, Ella Curry, Molly Thomas in the game. And Curry goes right in. Aggressive shot. No, not there. Ball's cleared out. And the throw in. Quick pass out of bounds. Two athletes hit the deck. They both seem okay, though, so... Both able to get up quickly. F with the call, and it looks like we might have our first penalty kick of the day coming up for Spring Ford. Oh, boy. Of course, penalty kicks are a quote-unquote free shot at the goal. I mean, of course, we all know they're not free shots because Upper Marion will put everyone on their team that's on the field in front of the goal. And don't forget, you have... Another wall behind the wall, as in Adams. Along with the rest of the Upper Marion team. <laughs> Interesting to see what Springford has drawn up for this penalty kick. A little bit of trickery there. And, as I said, Adams. Brick wall. Sarah Adams with a fantastic save, able to smother it. And she will now punt it into the midfield. I do like the aggressiveness by Spring Ford to go straight for the goal. Ball will go out to Caitlin Norwood. She will send it in the middle. Back out to Bronco. She pass it over to Higgins. Back in the middle. Curry with it now. Gives it off to Higgins. Back into fl back to Flanagan. Quick movement there for Spring Ford. Ball will go off into the corner. 
Ali Thomas attempting to hustle. Ball will go out of bounds. Upper Marion's ball. Checking into the game for Upper Marion. Number 24, Whitney Steiner. Cross goes to midfield. Back to Flanagan. Flanagan doing some dribbling. Passes it off to Curry. Curry lets it go for Higgins. Great awareness by Curry. Goes back to Curry. Some grinding going on there. Ball goes into the middle. McVeigh's shot, no good. That was, um, apart from the penalty kick and the corner kick, that was Springford's first shot on goal this half. For Marion, definitely made the adjustments defensively. But again, Upper Marion hasn't even had a shot this half. So, you know, they can change all they want defensively, but at the end of the day, the score is 2-0, and they have to get something going. Upper Marion continuing to make quick subs. Riley Eaton now checking into the game. I think that's a smart move by the coach. Keep the players fresh. Definitely keeping the players fresh. On the contrary, you see Springford going for long blocks and then making group substitutions. I'm sure Bronco's been out since... The half began. Yeah, been out since half began. Looks like Bronco and Higgins are the only two who have been out who started at half. I think Higgins went out briefly, but uh, I'm not sure. Throw in. Goes over to McVeigh. For Marion's ball now, they will now throw it in. Header by Flanagan. Another header. Ball will go out of bounds again. Another throw in for Upper Marion. Upper Mary needs an offensive push here. Passing it around out in midfield. Looks like Springford gains control of the ball. Over to Norwood. Norwood looking. Out to Higgins on the outside. Back to Bronco. Back to Higgins. Ball what a over, pass. Ball will go over to Molly Thomas. What a pass. Thomas with the drive now, looking for a shot. Passes it back into the middle. Picked up by Curry. Shot on goal. Wow. Another great save by Adams. Diving effort to make sure the ball didn't score. Adams is being put to work today. Yep, she's withstood almost every test that's come her way. Looks like we have another penalty kick coming up for Spring Ford. For Marion will form their wall of defense. Do you expect the same trickery here? I'm um, thinking, given the last one didn't work out, I expect them to try something different here. Could be the same strategy. Malay will run at it. She will kick it. Blocked by Upper Marion. Back to Curry. Curry. Shot off the net. No good. Upper Marion continuing their quick substitutions. Bronco check. Uh, not Bronco. Um, Donovan checks into the game. Upper Marion short substitutions. Keeping the legs fresh. set. Long cross hit into midfield. Flanagan controls. Now back to Caitlin Norwood. A little collision there. Some contact there and, and the ref, the ref calls on it. Push. See this is where they the upper Mary needs to capitalize. You know Springford had a few penalties in the first half with the handball and a little bit and, um, you Brooke know, Upper Marion hasn't been able to capitalize. Brooke Olson's cross goes into a whole gaggle of athletes. Moulet has the ball. It's blocked. She just sent it back out to McVeigh. For Carlin Glancy. To 
Curry. Now back on the outside to Moulet. Katie Seitz will pass it out to Bronco. She will pass it back, almost stolen. Springford able to maintain control of the ball. Springford will pass it up, looking to drive now. Malay, pass, almost stolen again. And McVeigh is now running down the ball. She will control it in the corner. Looking for a shot, shot is up, wide. Ball will be headed out of bounds, and Springford will control it. Another throw in. Curry with it for a shot. Ooh, wow. Off the crossbar. Off the crossbar. Didn't have enough spin on it. That was a great, great opportunity, though, for Springford. Great look at the goal, indeed. And Lohendre will get ready to cross it. Checking in for upper Marion is number five, Julia Newby. Her cross will go into midfield. Carlin Glancy from Springford with the ball. Passes it over to Bronco. Over to Higgins. Back in the middle. Bronco has been giving quite the workload this second half. I hope Flanagan dribbling through the upper Marion defenders. Able to keep the ball in bounds. Ref calls it out of bounds. For really? Marion's ball. I did not see it go out of bounds. Yeah, the ref did, obviously. Um, I thought I looked in bounds, too, but we have a tough angle up here. Either way, the refs are doing a fantastic job this game. You know, one missed call is, is okay. Curry's header goes over to Molly Thomas. Molly Thomas has the speed. She also has the flashy dribbles, too. We just passed the 20-minute mark, which is halfway of the first second quarter. Rams still maintaining their lead. Sorry, correction, second half of the game. Another substitution. It looks like number 18, Catherine Merritt, into the game proper, Marion. We're looking. Shot. Saved by Adams. It's another one to add to the Excel graph. She will punt it into midfield. Over to Riley Eaton. Ball is controlled by Springford now. Over to Higgins in the corner. She will let the ball go out of bounds. Upper Marion's ball. You know, after this game is done, you know, when Upper Marion is, is looking at uh, what they could have improved and what Springford looks at what they could have improved, I'm sure one of the first things Upper Marion is going to look at is time of possession. Yeah, Springford has definitely had the ball majority of this game. I would say 90% of the game. It's been on Springford's side of the, co uh, of the field. Ball is cleared out. Number 16, Mackenzie O'Connor checking in for Springford. And for Upper Marion, number 4, Allison Eck. Also checking in now for Upper Marion is number three, Chloe Rivera Montes. Bronco is ready to throw the ball in. She gets the okay from the ref and throws it into Flanagan. And are they going to call another handball? I think they will. Kicked in. Rivera Montes. Ball be kicked out to the goalie. It's 
back to the goalie. This is a good thing, but the goalie has been very quiet. That's a very good thing for Springford. Yeah. Able to keep the goalie on. You know, relatively easy game. Sure, um, sure, she's asking for a little action, but can't complain. Unfortunately for Adam, she's had way too much action. Yeah, but she's been able to withstand almost all the tests. Ball is cleared out in the mid. Header there by Carlin Glancy. Over to Caitlin Norwood. Back to Glancy. O'Connor now controls. It seems every time Opera Marion seems to get a little bit of control, Springford is right there to take the ball away from him. Catherine Merritt clears it. Looks like a um, penalty. Looks like Springford's ball. Andre will kick the ball in for Upper Marion. You know, considering that Springford just came off a 3-4 victory win in overtime, and before that they lost 0-3, I think that this game uh, is showing how resilient they actually are, especially after that rough schedule they just had. Definitely a tough loss at the hands of CB West. Obviously, CB West, a talented school. But, yeah, getting shut out is pretty tough, but it looks like they're rebounding pretty well here. Land again with a breakaway here. She will pass it. Connor sprinting. Good hustle. Able to keep the ball in play. Kicks it into the middle. Cleared out. And is that a quarter kick? Corner kick? I didn't uh, get the right angle on that. Looks like a throw in. O'Connor's throw in. Headed out by Upper Marion. Okay, now it's a corner kick. <laughs> Looks like Molly Thomas will handle the corner kicking duties for Spring Ford. We just passed the 15 minute mark. Again, in the second half. Spring Ford electing to go short on the corner kick. Ball will go back out of bounds. So, what do you expect here? Another short corner kick? Um, Springford seems to favor that short corner. Looks like Upper Marion's taking away the long corner. I think I think that's a smart move at this point, you know, to prevent any injuries, as that is a dangerous play. Risky for the goalkeeper too. And that's a goal. Is it? It's a goal. It's a goal for Springford. Off the corner kick. Of uh, fantastic awareness. I, I mean, the ball went dead there for a minute, and uh, I didn't see who got that goal, but <laughs> they knocked it in. Yeah, Springford able to knock it in. Kind of just a bit of a, confu a confusing play there, but goal. Springford and Upper Marion will each make large group substitutions. Four athletes checking in for the Rams and three checking in for the Vikings. What a, what a good, like, good timing for that goal. I mean... You know, with 13 minutes left, Springford, you know, is really, really trying to seal the deal in this game. You know, obviously. For Marion driving now. Obviously, this game is not over, but. Equally, the goalie will retain. She bobbles it a little bit, but no, for Marion athletes are around. She will control it. She will roll it out wide. So now that you're Springford and you have a comfortable lead, what do you think their game plan is? I think Springford's definitely going to look to pass the ball around, you know, drain some clock, limit Upper Marion's shots on goal. Um, just, you know, look to keep doing what they've been doing here. Good D by Caitlin Norwood to clear it out. Ball will go long. Moulet will run it down. Yeah, going back to that corner kick goal, uh, I mean, I think one of the best parts about that, that goal was the corner kick itself. I mean, it was extremely accurate, and it was so accurate that it fell right in front of the goal uh, for just one of the players just to walk it in. Yeah. I mean, that's why it looked a little awkward, but the truth is is that that corner kick was so perfect. So Marion will throw it in. Get Head it back out. Volleyed. Header again. Another volley. 
kick. Whoa! And a goal for Upper Marion. Are you kidding me? It is number 14, Riley Eaton, with the the goal from out where Emily Higgins scored earlier in the first half. Another long-range goal. That was insane. And the Vikings, a bit of a burst of energy here with about 12 minutes and 30 seconds left in the second half. Hey, I've seen crazier wins before. Yeah, definitely. If looking, they can pull this off. Definitely looking for the comeback. What a what a amazing amazing shot by Ian. I mean that was that was high arc and you know so something that the goalie couldn't even react in time for it. Fantastic awareness by her. Beautiful shot. Riley Ian is of course one of the starters for Upper Marion. Goalie for Springford will clear it middle. Molly Thomas gets it. And Springford will clear it. Upper Marion is looking to make in some subs, and in one of the subs is probably a, one of Upper Marion's MVPs for this game, and that is Donovan. Morgan Donovan has been fantastic on defense, especially covering that wing. And uh, I'm sure they're going to use her to get the ball back for them in quick situations. Whitney Steiner controls. Her pass is intercepted. Spring forward will clear to their goalie. And she will pass it out to Caitlin Norwood. Spring forward looking for a bit of an attack. Ball is volleyed in the air. Bermarion now controls. To Erica Smith in the middle. Over to Molly Thomas. Thomas dribbles down the field. Ball will go out of bounds. And it will be Upper Marion's ball. Upper Marion has to be very heads up in these times. We're reaching the 10 minute mark. We're 40 seconds away from 10 minutes. And they have to score quickly. They want to make Springford field pressured. For Marion looking to for more of the same as they had the last time they had the ball down in Springford's territory, scoring a nice goal. The throw-in is picked off. Ball goes to Molly Thomas. She's looking middle, takes a shot on goal, wide. Ball will go out of bounds. Uh, good awareness by the goalie for not touching the ball, letting it sail out of bounds. A lot of soccer is about awareness, you know. We're noticing where the players are, where the ball is. Brooke Olsen is uh, doing the the kickoff. Upper Marion looks to maintain control here, and they should. Clear it out to Sharky. She will pass it middle. For Marion, clears it. Back out to Sharkey. Sharkey will pass it wide to O'Connor. O'Connor looking to hit Smith. And that ball sails out of bounds. <laughs> Sharkey to throw it in for Springboard. Passes it over to Vagnozzi. Vagnozzi looking to attack. Ball stolen. Upper Mary now with a bit of an attack here. Good defense by Moulet to stall the attack. Solid pass. And Springford's defense is there to stop the drive. A little bit of contact there, but the refs let them play. Pass goes out to O'Connor. She kicks it towards the goalie. Adams is there to pick it up. Punts goes to midfield. And Sharkey to throw it in for Springford. Right, 
and the ball just sails out of out of bounds. A little under eight minutes to go. Sharkey to throw it in again. Ball goes to Molly Thomas. She falls. Upper Marion controls. Ball goes back out of bounds. Hops the fence and goes into the stands. Man, I was scared that was going to hit me for a second. Didn't have quite enough juice on it to get up <laughs> here. It's like, it's like Molly Thomas will sub out after that fall. Uh, pretty dangerous throw over there. But like like I said before, every time Upper Marion seems that it seems like they have possession, Springford is right there to rip it away from them. Yeah. Springford has definitely been able to keep up the intensity. O'Connor throwing it into McVeigh in the corner. Cleared. And it will go back out of bounds. Upper Marion ball. This is exactly what Springford wants. Keeps it keep it against the sideline, keep on making them throw it in. Make runs the clock. Number 18, Catherine Merritt to throw it in for Upper Marion. She throws it in. O'Connor is there. Springford is just trying to keep it away from him. Springford will clear out. Number 18, Kelly Buckley gives it off to the goalie. Out to Caitlin Norwood. Norwood will pass to McVeigh. Blocked by Upper Marion. Into the middle. Flanagan is there. Excuse me, that was Wellington who was there. Upper Marion seems to have a push here. It's number four, Rivera Montes. And the ball will go out of bounds. They were not able to capitalize again. It's been the same all game long. Springford's goalie. It's the cross. We'll go to Wellington. Back to Norwood. Norwood now pushing to McVeigh. And they will clear it back out. A little over five minutes to go here in the second half. I think uh, Springford here has a very comfortable lead with five minutes left. But like I've said, I've seen crazy things happen before. So We'll see if Upper Marion has any tricks up their sleeve. I think the only way Upper Marion could even get a little bit of leverage is if they have some breakaway. Number seven, Olivia Iyer running the ball down, shot on goal, saved by Springford's goalie. She will take it and throw it to O'Connor. Over to Sharkey. Out to Wellington. Nice pass to McVeigh. Springford is just going to keep on doing the same thing. Make sure the ball gets out of bounds. Sharkey's throwing to McVeigh. Controlled by Upper Marion. McVeigh continuing to fight for the ball. She gains control of it. Wow. Passes it out to Wellington. Very well played by McVeigh. Ball goes back to McVeigh in the corner. Blocked by number five, Julia Newby of Upper Marion. Are we getting another corner kick? Oh, wait. Yep. All right, the last time Springford had a corner kick, we all know what happened. They scored last time. One and for one for three on corner kicks tonight. Doesn't look like they have anybody short. This one goes up. Long corner over to Vagnozzi. Ball is cleared out. Molly, T or um, excuse me, Wellington is there. Over to O'Connor in the middle. That McVay. pass had way too much juice on it. It's definitely a long corner for sure. Ball is cleared out. Kelly Buckley's header. Goes middle to O'Connor. She heads it as well. And back out to Sharkey. Ball goes back out to Buckley. We are at the three-minute mark. 
Buckley over to Norwood. Springford's odds look good in this game as they look to improve to 9-1. and one. What a record. Pretty good. O'Connor over to Wellington. Ball's cut off by Upper Marion. Upper Marion looks to make some last-minute subs. Wellington on the outside. Met by Brooke Olson. Springford, shot on goal. Denied, cleared out. Olivia Iyer with the ball. Now McVeigh has it. She will pass it out to Wellington. Ball is cleared by Upper Marion. About two minutes left. Upper Marion will have three subs coming into the game here. With a minute and 40 seconds left in the game, I think it's fair to say that Springford has a very, very good advantage to win this game. Upper Marion would need a serious miracle, but in sports, crazier things have happened. The clock continues to run. The cross will head into midfield. There, ball will go out of bounds. Good hustle by Springford's assistant coach to run down the ball. Sends it over to that's, Sharkey for the throw-in. That's why, that's why Springford is so good at hustling. And with about a minute to go here in the game, we'd like to take a minute, a moment to thank our camera crew for the game. Mrs. They have Merja, been fantastic. Mrs. Merja and Mr. B up top. And, of course, we got to thank our director, Mr. Rothermel. He's done a fabulous job tonight. I... Mr. Rothermel does a fabulous job every game that we broadcast here. Yes, definitely. Springford will send the ball out to the goalie. Mr. Barlota and Mr. Merja again on camera. Did a great job this game. About 30 seconds to go. Ball will go over to the goalie. Upper Marion seconds. is definitely trying to make this game look a little better for themselves with one more goal, but looks like the goalie is going to walk slowly, punt slowly. Ball goes to Erica Smith in the middle. Spring forward, just going to look like they're going to run it out for the last nine seconds. You know, this is what I like about Upper Marion. They fight to the end. You know, there's eight seconds left. They will fight. And as the horn sounds, that is the game, your final score. Spring Ford 3, Upper Marion 1. Idan, what did you see from Spring Ford in this game that allowed him to get the win? I saw fantastic defense. I saw fantastic time of possession. Just all around a fantastic side on the defensive end. I feel like Hope was fantastic on defense. I feel like Molly was fantastic on defense. I think that Spring Ford is ready to get back to their major winning streak that they had earlier in the season. And you see them having, uh, you know, the, their their handshakes, you know, saying good game, which is what good sportsmanship looks like. Uh, that that's what we're all about here at Spring Ford, isn't that right, Anthony? Yes, that is. Um, Spring Ford will move nine and one on the season. Upper Marion will fall to one and five. From Edan, I'm Anthony, and that'll do it for our broadcast. See you next time when, um, yeah, see you next time. Have a good night, everyone.